Welcome. I'm Genevieve Sekoy, the Adult Program Coordinator here at the Campbell County Public Library. Thank you all for joining us for Life and Death Matters, Planning for Aging and End of Life. This is uh, the second of a four-session partnership with the Latin Memorial Services, where we invite you to learn how to navigate the final chapter of your life or your loved one's lives. We are live streaming these events and recording them, so if you want to go back and look and review things, check out our Facebook page, page and our YouTube channel. Join us next Thursday for uh, March 28th at 1 p.m. for Finish Your Thoughts, presented by Rick Erb. He will be the local attorney who will discuss essential documents that we all need to include, such as a will and um, advanced directives. We'll finish the series on April 6th at 9 a.m. at the library with um, an end of life symposium that will feature six speakers who will discuss numerous um, important end of life topics. Today, you'll be learning to, uh, um, about creating meaning, a meaningful service from Vicki Kistick, advanced, advanced funeral planner with Gillette Memorial Services. I'd like to thank her for all of her work she's put into this. She's done a fantastic job lighting up speakers um, about a tough topic that we all need to learn about. Also speaking today will be Jerrica Mills, who is the Gillette Memorial Services Office Manager. She will um, give you some information about their website. They have lots of fantastic features that you're welcome to utilize there um, as we speak. Also speaking will be Darren Mills, who is the current, who is the Campbell County Cemetery. No, Darren Edmonds. Sorry, I'm charging. Darren Edmonds, who is the Campbell County Cemetery District Superintendent, and he'll uh, help us learn all about Mount, Mount Pisgah and the uh, opportunities you have there. So now, please join me in welcoming Vicki Kiss. Hello again, everyone. And for those of you that are joining us on Facebook or uh, in the future watching videos, I always like to tell people that there are two guarantees in life, death and taxes, and I'm not an accountant. <laughs> okay. So that's what we're, we've are we been talking about last week. We did write your own obituary, and many of you made it for that. And Rita has come back this week to uh, be sure that those of you that are joining us today have the right information. And I think she's been walking around um, visiting with people about what she's worked on on their obituaries. Um, but today we're going to talk about not only the offerings of the website, um, but also cremation versus burial. What does that look like in planning? In our world, we call it disposition. And um, maybe some of you have thought about that what you want and maybe you haven't. But for those of you that are thinking, what is an advanced funeral planner? We are the ones that work with funeral homes and for funeral homes to help people get their plans down on paper. And I was actually really surprised at how many people come in and do pre-planning. I did not know how busy I would be when I took this position. And it's been very interesting, I've met a lot of wonderful people. I have heard many, many stories about their lives. And I just want to encourage you that your life matters. The living of your life, the stories of your life, your family, your family's family, all of that matters. And I am blessed every day to have an opportunity to get those things written down on paper for you. People that come see me or uh, advanced funeral planners in, with other funeral homes, they're not always terminally ill. In fact, that's probably fewer than just people who are thinking about making sure burden, the burden isn't on their family after they pass. That really is the larger group of people that I meet with, is that they maybe lived through recently having someone in their life pass and they've sat at the arrangement table and they're thinking, I really want to get this done so that it doesn't affect my family as it has affected me or maybe they're planning their estates. And that's like one thing that came up during the planning was, oh, I should probably get my funeral um, planned and funded. So that's what advanced funeral planners do. I don't want to take a lot of time today because I am super excited to have experts in the industry here to present um, things that 
you can use today that will help you in the future in your planning and also with your family. It is our heart's desire that when people leave our seminars, you are becoming experts in the field and you can go share with your family and friends about what you learn because pre-planning and having it down really helps, um, as you can imagine, family members sit at the arrangement table not knowing what mom or dad or brother or sister wanted. It really helps them. I think it's the greatest gift of love that you can give to your family and, and friends. So how many around um, these tables have sat around a Thanksgiving table or a Christmas table and talked about their funeral? Hey, I love it. I thought I was gonna be the only person in the room, but I'm not, um, of course. Um, it is a very interesting topic, but have you sat around the table and talked about if the house burned down, how, what is our exit? If something happened where we couldn't get a hold of each other with, through cell phones, how would we get a hold of each other? These are very similar conversations. It's just that death is so final and sometimes it's hard to talk about. And so I just encourage you to find a way to talk to your family about it so that it isn't a hard conversation and it will actually help them in the days that they've lost you. It will help them start a positive grieving experience because you've talked about it, even if it was briefly, they know what your wishes are. Okay, so I'm going to introduce to you uh, Jerrica Mills. She, um, as Jen said earlier, she is our office manager at Gillette Memorial Chapel, Walker Funeral Homes, and Meridian Mortuary in Newcastle. She is um, our go-to girl. She is, I tell her that she's the one that's herding cats every day, and uh, she's really good at it. She's figured it out. Um, she is exceptional at her job and she has a wealth of information. So please welcome my friend and our office manager at your funeral homes, Ms. Jerrica Mills. <laughs> oh, Jerrica, I get to read your obituary. It's not really an obituary. It's a biography of me, a snippet, because I have a way more in that story. But it was a pretty good one. It is. And, and I wrote it and I was... I was actually proud of myself because I'm not a writer. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to read this to you and then uh, Jerrica will take over. So Jerrica Mills was born in Eagle View, South Dakota on the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe Reservation. She grew up throughout South Dakota, Montana, and Wyoming while her dad worked on ranches and in construction. She made Gillette her home over 30 years and or 30 years ago, Jerrica is proud of her Irish, Native American, and Scandinavian heritage and is proud that on her maternal side of the family, she's able to trace back the lineage to Crazy or Chief Crazy Horse, who would be her great times five grandfather. Jerrica met her husband, Ronnie Mills, a Southern Campbell County native the summer before her senior year of high school. And yes, if you know a Mills of Campbell County, Crook County, or Weston County, she's probably related. In fact, her and I are short tail related. <laughs> Something in the water around here. Um, they have been married for 28 years and have three adult children, Garrett, Gavin, and Guthrie, who everyone calls Gus. She loves to go camping, fishing, and hiking in the Bighorn Mountains. And in the summer months, along with motorcycle trips to see the beauties of the world that God has created. During the winter months, Jerrica would be considered a homebody where she enjoys reading, baking, and just spending time with her family. Jerrica lost her father very unexpectedly when she was 34, and he was 49. Three years after his passing, she saw a help wanted ad for administrative assistant at Gillette Memorial Chapel and thought she would apply. She recalled how helpful and supportive the South Dakota Funeral Home staff was during the death of her father and thought this is what God is leading me to. It is crazy how things happen to lead a person in the direction they never thought they would go, but 10 years later, in now she is the office manager for three funeral home services and locations and still enjoys providing the same service she received to every family that comes into the funeral homes in need of a direction. Now, please welcome Mr. Erica Mills. Thank you, Vicki. So yep, I'm, I basically am a Campbell County native. I've been here more than half of my life, actually probably more of my life than any. I've been a Mills way longer than I was a Thompson. So um, 
I just consider myself from Wyoming. <laughs> but I do also still proud of my South Dakota heritage. Um, so when my dad died, we lived here in Gillette and we had to travel to Mobridge, South Dakota because that was the closest funeral home to where my dad would be buried in Eagle View, which is four hours from Eagle View. <laughs> Luckily, um, there was email. I was glad for that. Um, I would have been more, I was not prepared. Mm -hmm. <sighs> He's been gone a while <laughs> and it still gets me because we weren't. Um, so I always encourage people now, I encourage my mom, I'm like, mom, fill this out. Please keep telling me what you want. If your mind changes, she's getting more technology savvy a little bit at a time. Um, uh, so I'm going to be able, I thought, when Vicki said, can you do this? I said, yep, because I can walk my mom through literally every step on her phone. And she used to live in South Dakota. Luckily, she lives back here with me, so I can just drive to her house now. But I used to have to get on her home phone and walk her through it. So if I can walk her through that 500 miles away, I think I can walk you guys through our website. And we also offer um, a planning center, which is kind of like a medical portal, but it's a funeral portal. Um, we normally send it out to families at the time of death, but we're actually wanting to experiment with sending it to families prior to, even the person that maybe um, is planning their funeral already. So then you can make your child an editor of this planning center, and you can they can go, wait, I need to go to that website. Mom has her obituary. Mom has what music she wanted. Mom has what flowers she wants me to order. She has all of this down for me. So I'm going to show you how to do that today too. And if you, even if the video doesn't work or you, cause I, I know technology, it just sometimes just doesn't work. You can call me. I have walked people through it at the um, funeral home. I probably would even come to your house <laughs> just cause I'm, I just, I just worry about my moms and stuff and all my grandmas. Cause it was, it was hard losing my dad and not having the technology. I mean, they emailed us his card. They emailed his, us his obituary, but not knowing what my dad wanted was really hard. Not having a clue, because my dad was invincible and he was supposed to live forever. So, we're going to start. So, if you've ever been to our website, this is where you would go to. You can either go to Gillette Memorial Chapel or Walker Funeral Gillette. I like Gillette Memorial Chapel, I guess, because every time I type in Walker Funeral, you're going to get one in Michigan, too, <laughs> which they have, we have received stuff in the mail from them. So, um, Vicki's going to kind of help me out. I'm going to help her with the pointer. So, if you go to our website, you can click on About Us. That'll tell you, um, like, our history of the funeral home. This actually shows our team. You want to click on that, Vicki? So we'll go through our staff. Um, it's it's current. We have a, one other person I need to add, but this has our apprentices, um, our crematory operator. It has Vicki. Casey is out in Newcastle. She's actually our aftercare coordinator. It has me. <laughs> Um, and then we have a support staff, and we actually have a couple more support staff that we will be adding. But that's kind of um, gives you like when you before you come to the funeral home or go on there. I like it. People are like, um, I need to talk about uh, Frida. She's the dark haired one, and I'm like, well, she's not anymore, but she really does look good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's kind of nice. If you are ever, you know, want that, and I always tell people, research them, you know, get to know them. We like to get to know you, so you might as well get to know us. Um, here you can so you can look at obituaries. You can actually, which goes to um, our listing. It helps you um, send flowers, receive, you can even receive notifications. So if you click on that, Vicki, it's going to tell you to put your email in. You're going to get a notification, which is kind of weird, but a lot of people are obsessed with receiving obituaries. You will know every time somebody passes away. I have a lot of banks, financial institutes, some people, my mom, I'm on this. I know I, I, I guess I like it for me because then I know I got an obituary up, right? <laughs> but 
So yeah, if you wanted to be subscribed to that, that's under that obituaries. Um, go ahead and go to services. This is just kind of the services we offer, and each one of them shows just different types. So yeah, if you're just, I like I said, always research, and that's what we have just vast amount of in you in the um, knowledge everything on here. But the next one is planning ahead. That one is great. So this, I have had families use at the time of death. I need to plan ahead, but actually I need to plan now. So um, you can either click on, so you can click on why you're planning ahead. It's going to tell you why we're planning ahead. There's a mouse there too here if you want to use it. I know that's mouse. I like a mouse better. Um, this will help you even secure a free planning form. There's a free planning checklist, which is great. Scroll down and it kind of gives you an idea of what you want. Read some of those. Your okay, and decide what type of service you want. Okay, do I want to be buried? Do I want to be cremated? Um, what kind of clothes do I want? You know what? My mom is pretty, she's got hers in the back of the closet. This is my funeral clothes. She don't want me to put her in something. Because my mom doesn't dress like a grandma. But she's a grandma and I always tell her, Mom, you need to dress your age. She does not. <laughs> but my mom is also the size of a twig. So, lucky. Dirk, if I check those, what's going to happen then? Does it take me over where I put in, I want to wear the blue dress instead of the green? No. What's it? Can you repeat the question? Oh, so Rita's asking if she does check those, is it going to let you go on? It isn't. On this part, it is not. When we get to the planning center part, it will let you. This is just kind of an idea. So, you know, if you're a note taker, you could take it, you could print it off. It's just, I think it's just to encourage you to think about what you need, but I'm going to get you to where you're really going to fill it out. Um, go. And this is more, this is what you would go if like this part would also help you um, have that talk of a lifetime. That's what Vicki does during her pre-planning with um, services. It gives you a video, just, just knowledge about pre-planning. You know, if you're just not quite committed to doing it yet, you're just not sure, this would be a good idea to do first. Instead of saying, oh, do I really want to? But I'm not sure. So if you're able to access the internet, it, it's I just always tell people research, research, research. Look into it. I don't expect um, families to choose us every time. I, I would love to serve every one of you, but sometimes you're going to be in a different state. Maybe you move, you know. But go to that. Go to a website, the funeral homes websites. Just it's just a they are a wealth of knowledge and it's not there just to look at obituaries i don't i guess that my my kids are in their 20s and they still think oh you just go to your website for obituaries well no <laughs> i'm like no the, you go there to learn how to plan a funeral it answers quite a bit of questions um but go ahead and vicky if you did hit click on start planning maybe yep see there's that Scroll down. I believe it's on this page. Yep. So I want to start planning. So you've looked through the stuff. You've read about the stuff. You want to pre-plan. Um, if you fill this out for yourself, your parent, your spouse, it's just going to ask you information. It's going to ask you your address. It's going to just ask you basic questions about yourself. Once you complete this, we get an email. After that, I get an email. I get I forward my emails all to Vicki. She reaches out. You're able to. Some people just are like, I just don't want to call the funeral home. You can email us. It's great. I like it. Sometimes I get them in the middle of the night. That's when you're thinking about it. It's it, it's it's crazy. We can do anything any time of the day now. So yeah, if you wanted to, you can do that. And then I would forward the email. And then when you're ready to answer the phone when Vicky calls, then you're able to. I just I think that some people are just hesitant of, of taking that step. It's really hard for them to commit to pre-planning. It it's inevitable. But like like you said, there's only two things guaranteed in life: death and taxes. And you're right. I am not an accountant. I did go to school for it, but I don't even presume to know it anymore. I know funerals. So 
Any questions about our website? Do I want me to click anywhere? I want Mickey to click anywhere. I do get a question. How many people do get phone calls to pre-plan your funeral? Anybody? I don't Anybody know. get phone calls to pre-plan your funeral? Not phone calls. Mm -hmm. Literature in the mail. Literature in the mail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're watching that, you know, you're watching that. What was it? I don't even know who does it. It used to be Alex Trebek telling you you need to, the cost of a funeral pre-plan or think about it. That's the only ones I've ever seen. I don't see them often anymore. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just taboo again, funerals. My kids, I'm not allowed to text them, do you know somebody? Because they always assume they died. No, I just ran into their sister and they said they knew, knew my Gus and everybody knows my Gus. And everybody, I now already tell everybody you need a Gus, but yeah, my Gus is known throughout Campbell County quite a bit. He he just goes everywhere. Um, he does a lot of brandings. He he can install internet. He works everywhere. So, but yeah, so just once after aftercare. So aftercare is after after you've passed away. Um, our <clears throat> aftercare coordinator or even one of our funeral directors would reach out to you to reach out to your family and ask you, how are you doing? We don't forget about the living just because we serve their family at all. That's the best part. That was the best part about the funeral home that handled my dad's. They called us. She checked in. She sent me a birthday card. She actually sent Gus a birthday card. Because he was only 10 years old when his grandpa passed away. So having that connection with your funeral director, well, I mean, it's kind of weird and kind of maybe morbid to get a, a thank you card or a birthday card or just any kind of acknowledgement. But then I realized she didn't forget us. And she didn't forget my dad. So that's always a bonus too. Um, but yeah, and then, um, so yeah, we would reach out to you as aftercare. Just more knowledge, helping you through it. We also, when you when the person passes away, we have an everything after program that you are automatically um, offered through an email or a text message that your family is able to accept. You can actually, um, that's what this is. Um, they would get, I think we get like monthly to quarterly emails. In the first six months, I believe you get a monthly email. It asks you, how are you doing? How's your grief today? What's your stress like? And then it gives you options of um, to do a yoga for the day, how to breathe. It gives you resources of what to do if you're having a bad day. You know, and we don't realize we're having those bad days until that question comes up. I saw when we started everything after I, so I'm the guinea pig at the funeral home. I do. I have so many emails that come for funeral stuff and aftercare stuff that I know what it's like to get those. And I still get them, and I think it's been two and a half, three years. I might only get them every six months now, but it still asks me, how am I doing? Is it, and you can, and I can opt out anytime. Anytime your family's like, okay, I'm done. I don't need to be reminded. Yeah, I still need to be reminded, hey, you need to breathe. Because like Vicki said, I do literally hurt cats. <laughs> the funeral directors are going all different places. Families are stressed when they come in and see me. They're just confused about everything. I try to manage it and help them as much as I possibly can. So, and luckily we have a lot of good resources too. So, any other questions? There, I like this resource one too. You know, I like how to write an eulogy. How to, no, you're fine. <sighs> There's even one on there, which I don't even mind the phone calls. If you do call and go, I've had people ask me, what, um, what can I wear to a funeral? There's funeral etiquette. What can, how do I do that? I refer to this quite often, but I also let them know if I've already met with the family or the funeral directors have met with the family. They're a very casual family, wear jeans. My dad, if me and my sister would have wore dresses to his funeral, he probably would have laughed. And, and he, he, he would have. My mom was like, I need to wear a dress. And I'm like, no, you don't. Dad would never want us to wear a dress. She never had sleeves on his shirt. So why would we put dresses on? <laughs> 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 so, 
so yeah like i said we have so many resources and it, not only on our website but at our funeral home so yes at the time of your passing once we get your vital information which is of course your name your social your date of birth where you were born your parents names we get that all into the wyoming vital records once we hit verify it sends a message to social security in the state of wyoming so if you were on social security it does take a little bit it'll take 10 to 12 days they say for it to process in the system but families always call oh did you let social security know we do let them go do you let them about retirement amazingly i think they're on my email because <laughs> i do get oh do we get notify um railroad retirement i like i said i think they're on our email because i do get phone calls saying so they didn't know that your husband or you were in work for the railroad or they forgot oh mom's been getting that pension your kids are going to forget or they don't even know you know some sometimes i get it your finances are hush hush you don't want to share them or you forget you need to share them they let they contact us and go you know we can't or they and they send out probably i believe they send out a letter probably to like you would be sending it to wherever you get your mail from the railroad like either your statements or anything and if it comes back, so your kids have already transferred your mail, cancels your mailbox, you don't get mail anymore, it's not forwarded anywhere. They call us and go, I cannot get a hold of a family member for so and so. I'm like, I'll, so I don't give them your family's information, I don't give them their phone number, I just say, let me take your information and I'm gonna get a hold of that family and go, you know what? So I call and go, Bob, your mom, she was getting that railroad retirement pension fund still. And he, he you know, they go, oh, nothing I thought about. Dad's been gone 20 years. I never thought she would still be getting that. No, she is. So they want to finalize that account. They want to close it out. Wyoming retirement does the same thing. Wyoming retirement is notified actually through social security and vital records. So they will contact us and they will find next of kin with us also. Do the same thing. We are always there to help anybody that calls. So is that a yes or no? So no, I don't, but I, for some reason they get a hold of me. We don't officially do it. We used to. We used to. We used to. Um, I don't, I guess I, it's not on our checklist anymore to do because of the technology. They just automatically seem to find out. And I do think it has a lot to do with that email that they can receive saying so and so passed away. Any other questions about Social Security, Medicaid? Do they have any burial benefits? Social Security only has benefits if you are a um, a living spouse or a dependent child under the age of 18 or um, of mental disability if you're still a dependent of that person most of the time it ends at 18 as a child but if you are married to the person that passes away you do get a death benefit and i believe it's still 255 dollars we do okay so we also do notify them but if you are expecting that your social security benefit is going to increase you will have a meet, you will still re be required to call Social Security and we give you a hold dial um, and uh, you will have to call Sheridan. There's a, there, you'll still have to go through the process of making sure that that benefit is taken care of. It's just a verification process. They're not gonna automatically adjust your Social Security benefit. They need to verify, you know, that they're not sending it to some random person. Just another, yep, yeah, Emma. Uh, there's some kind of a report where when, like when my husband died, mm -hmm. it depends on whether, what time of the month you get your check and yeah. then you have to pay back if they've already. Exactly, paid. yep. And, you know, some people aren't. Aware yep, and now. that is, so she's saying that if your spouse, you know, passed away three days after you just got that, your benefit deposited, 
I always suggest to families, leave the money alone, don't close that account out, wait a little bit, make that phone call to Social Security, set up your appointment if you expect your debt benefits to change, they may pull some out. They may pay you a little more because there's, they're going to prorate it from the time of the last payment to the next payment or to the day of debt. It's just, I am not an expert of Social Security, but I can get you on the phone because they don't usually tell me a lot of information because I'm not family. That's the biggest rule now. You know, I used to be able to call up there and ask them for a Social Security number if the family couldn't find it. Now they're like, eh. No, I can't do that for you. You know, there's HIPAA has definitely grabbed hold a lot more, especially with technology. We, you know, if you've been identity theft is very well arise, so they double check. But yeah, um, another thing people ask about is, I am on Medicare, but I'm going to go to Medicaid. And I'm going to be put in the, you know, I might be going into my legacy or retirement community. What's going to happen when I pass away? So now they require you or they ask you if you're able to do a pre-plan, do it. They want to see that in your file at the legacy or wherever. They want to know that you have one. They're going to make sure that you have that amount set aside. And what it is called is it's irrevocably assigned to us at the funeral, at a funeral. They don't want to irrevocably assigned to anybody else. Why? Because you could ask that person to cash it out for you. They don't, you can't. That's an asset. You know, they keep you, keep you limited on what you got. So when you go into Lake Legacy, you're, you've already got your pre-plan and you can pre-plan a full burial. That's what you want. That's your wishes. If you have the funding to do it, great. So then your kids don't have to worry. And then it gets to the point where, oh, I'm going to change. I really only want cremation. I already funded. Does my family get that money back? They don't. So I always encourage families, even the person, they're, you know, they're like, I just, I just want to, I just want to change. And I'm like, well, why are you changing? I don't know. I thought about it. I don't want to be buried. And I just think I can get that money back. And I'm like, you're in legacy now, dear. You know, you can't. They'll call me, the family will call me, but we but we can get that money back. No, we're not gonna, we're not this the state doesn't allow us to anymore because your care has been care paid for by Medicaid. So if they are your and then at the time of the services and your family decides, oh, mom put twenty thousand dollars away for a full burial benefit. We're going to just cremate her and maybe do a service later. Can we get that money back? No. It's going to, if you do not, and we always encourage to stick with what you chose. Don't, don't change what mom wanted. Don't. She planned this. Dad and her sat down. This is what they've chosen. Don't change. Because that money, they, and they do, they, families sometimes assume that they're going to get money back. We have to send it back to the state of Wyoming. It's our legal obligation as a funeral home to do that. So that's a thought too. It's, it's hard to tell families they can't get the money back, but it's just something, I mean, and, and Medicaid once you, go ahead. So if you had, let's say you put in $5,000 uh -huh. into this irrevocable trust. Yep. And the funeral now is more than $5,000. Does the family just have to pay that? Or they, do you have to just say, no, they paid $5,000. That was the irrevocable trust. So we're going to have to do it for $5,000, even though it's a $10,000 funeral. No, we do not. In Wyoming, it's not guaranteed at that price. So we, the, so the, the pre-planning, those policies, they have an interest rate. They do gain funds every, you know, every year, monthly, daily. They gain funds. So it... So you say so you just decided you're going to have a five thousand dollars service, simple. I'm going to be cremated with a simple service, mm -hmm. and then they come and go. Oh no, mm -mm. we need right. mom to be buried. We need, which I encourage also. You need to talk to your families. What do they need? You're gone. What I mean, I get it. You have certain wishes for yourself, but if my mom would have said, "We're going to cremate your dad," I said, "No, no, 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 you're not. I need a spot to go." I need that graveside to go talk to my dad. 
um, if they chose to go higher than that, they would pay the difference. Okay. If the if the prices increase, they would pay the difference. Okay. So yes, nothing. It isn't guaranteed, <clears throat> but we still encourage you to put as much as you can away because it. I mean, you could live twenty more years, and it could even cover. It could possibly cover. Mm -hmm. I've had that happen. I have a family. I think I have a couple. They started paying when they were like forty-seven. It it never stops accruing interest. So is that compound? Is it compound interest? Yearly? It's yearly. She's my insurance lady. I don't know. I just know. This. I just yeah, know a lot about it. Because since you said daily, it's looking well, like if you passed away at the, I when I so when I call and they ask me the date of death. That's when I they'll kind of give it to me exactly to that age or interest. So, okay. Any more questions about our website? Now we're gonna go. Oh, yeah. Just a question. When my father passed away, we had to do the legwork with the insurance companies. When Kathy's uh, father passed away, the funeral home is. Is that an option here? Which way do you guys? You know, it just depends. Um, sometimes families want to do that. I we assist you as much as we can with the insurance. So if you use life insurance and you haven't used a pre-planned insurance, um, we we can go through a third-party funding company, which helps us get paid faster, and then they and then we work with them and you to get the rest of the paperwork to the insurance company. And then do you, the insurance company still sends the balance after that? Yep, the insurance company will send the balance of that insurance policy to the beneficiary. Yep. But it seems a lot better with where the funeral home is involved. Yep, yep. And if you're willing to have us do it, some families are like, oh, we got this. Mm -hmm. You might want to ask me about it because I, I don't mind sitting on the phone and on, call, you know, on the phone call. Okay, any more questions about this website? We're going to go to our planning center now. So, when you're with, if you do plan to meet with Vicki or you have a loved one pass away, we ask for your email address. What we're going to do is introduce you and invite you to our planning center. I'm literally going to step you step by step what it looks like. So, I sent myself a planning center. And it's going to help you personalize your online planning. In the planning center, you're going to be able to add your service preferences. You're going to upload files and photos. You're going to start working on your obituary, which is great because I had no idea about some of the stuff my dad knew that he did. I, yeah, I'm only 15 years difference in age, so we kind of grew up together. <laughs> but I didn't know some of the stuff he did as a young child. And my grandma, when she let me know, I was like, oh, wow. You know, my dad told me stories, but I, I wasn't sure. So that's kind of nice if you can already write up your own parts of your own obituary and they can add it. And they will, we can help you with anything. Okay, Vicki, go ahead and get started. So you would get that email. It's going to exactly say that, July Memorial Chapel, Walker Funeral Home. We're inviting you to this planning center. Jerrica, can I know this is somebody's passed away and you had sent this yep. to a family member to start planning. Yep, or we can also, if you meet with Vicki and you give her your email address, she can send you this invite. On this invite, you can also, we'll also show you how to add an editor. So if you have um, your daughter or your son, that's, you know, they're, they're going to do this. You can add them both. If you know their email, you can add them to this and they'll know this information. Mom starts adding stuff, they're going to get an email. The funeral home gets an email. We know when you added, whether you're pre meeting or you're planning at funeral time. So be up to date. What? And be updated. And be updated anytime you want. Anytime. So it's like a medical portal. It does require a password. Go ahead and create one. I don't care what you create. Here would be an example of the obituary that I helped with. Yep. It could be posted if they would already have their planning center yep. portal to go in and, and add this and share it with family members or not. Yep, they can. We're going to get there. Okay. Rita's even learning this too, guys, because she really hasn't seen this side of it. She sees what the funeral directors see. 
So yeah, you get this, you create an account. The reason it is password protected is because it does ask you for some important stuff. Your social security number is going to be on here. Your birthday is going to be on here. 2024. <laughs> okay. So then you do this, and this is what it goes to. Monique St. Cloud. She is my mom. I don't really know. I just made a name up there. I was like, Monique St. Cloud, I'm going to get information on. Do you want to this? So when you get to this part, go ahead and play this video. Can you upload pictures? Planning for a funeral is hard. It's really loud. <laughs> um, maybe I'm up on the volume on my computer. It's all the way probably up. Is it? Try there. It can be a lot of pressure to try and plan a service that captures a lifetime of memories in just a few hours at the funeral home. But it doesn't have to be that way. With our planning center, you can spend less time at the funeral home filling out paperwork and more time planning the best possible service to remember the life of it. You can also connect with your family to get help planning the service entirely online from start to finish. Okay, so you say your children live in Florida. They have to travel back to Wyoming. Where's mom's photos? What does she do with all this stuff? They don't even have to. They don't have to look for anything if you've already uploaded or they can add to it. So go ahead and go to your information. This is gonna, oh, sorry. Um, that's my work computer too, so I get a lot of messages from everybody. Okay, um, your information, you can start putting in all your information. Um, are you a veteran? Your address, your birth information, your personal information which is your social security number. See, another reason to have that, um, your highest level of education. Maybe your children did not, my children did not know that my husband did not graduate from high school. They know now. <laughs> they know now. If they watch this, they're not gonna watch Facebook about that parents. <laughs> is Monique's spouse passed away? You know, all of this. You can literally add all of this. You can add your parents' names. Please add your parents' names. You know why? I've had come let it go bingo. I don't know what grandma's name was, and I don't know what grandma's maiden name was. That is needed on a death certificate. She was just Grandma George. Which is kind of, you know, that's all she would, that's all my kids would know. Some I mean my grand my kids would not know what my mom's maiden name was. She would not know. They young. So all of that can be done by you or your you know or your family. This is where you're gonna add family. So, see, I added myself. I'm, an, I'm a planner. Go ahead and add a family member. Go ahead and add yourself, Vicki. Not Vaki. <laughs> if you know your child's, definitely put how, how they're related. You can be a friend. You can be, uh, yep, you can be a friend. I'm going to invite them to the, I want to invite them. Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead and click add. Okay, Derek, and when you invite them now, they can alter things or? They, they hold on, okay. hold on. Okay. So we're going to put in her email address. She's going to get the same email that you would have gotten in the beginning, that welcome, but it's going to say your mom has started or your aunt or your you're, and this is where you can choose. Do you want them to be an editor? Mm, I don't want them to edit anything. Some of that editing is going to hide some of that stuff. It's going to hide your social. You want to be a viewer? Mm, no, because I want them to be able to add stuff to it. So, yep, I'm going to make them a contributor. And then you can write them a letter or a note. Or I might write a whole big story of like, here, hey, we're, hey, we're working on mom's mom service information could you help me you knew you knew her way more than i did as a child could you give me some information on that obituary and that's what it's going to get and then go ahead and scroll down 
So, see these permissions? So as a viewer, they're only going to be able to view that obituary. They're only going to be able to view resources. We'll get to those. They're only going to be able to view files you added. But as a contributor, they can view your obituary. They can view the resources. They can add files. They can add photos and files. They'll be able to edit that obituary. They can edit some checklists. And they can pin and view merchandise. I don't, I have never done that on this one. But as an editor, you get to do everything. So like I said, I don't really want my kids knowing my social right now. I, they can deal with it at the time of death. But they don't even need to really know it. Um, but they can edit the rest of this. You, you are the only one if you make yourself an editor can only do those things. I always... I think there was a question about what exactly is merchandise? Merchandise? So your casket preference, your urn preference, if you want a vault, if you want jewelry, if you want your kids to have something more, you're going to be able to edit that. <clears throat> they are going to be able to maybe edit it if they want to add it. You don't have to, you know. But that's a good idea to do this. So that you know but i always encourage everybody to make your daughter your son your grandchildren whoever i had i had a family who last month their only person that they knew that they didn't have children their siblings were the same age as them in their 90s so they sure in the heck weren't going to want to do this he made his nephew his beneficiary he made his nephew and this now when we gave his nephew a call he's like he did what he didn't even know that his uncle had done this. And I had to explain to him, you know, he pre-planned and that's who he chose was you. And he goes, well, I'll do it. He's my uncle. He, he was basically helped, he helped me just like a dad. But if he already would have known this, he would have been way more prepared because he was not prepared. So yeah, and then we would send Vicki that invite. So you scroll all the way down, send an invite. Vicki's going to get an email. She's going to be able to log in, do the same thing. So go ahead and go to files and video. Oh, files and photos. So you're going to be able to select the file type you want to upload. This can be done from your phone also. Is it a text document? Like you've typed it up already, you want to just add it. You want a poem, a certain poem, a certain Bible verse, something a certain quote that you want included, somebody to say even at your funeral. Everything that you would like to do, and they have it being, um, you know, you recorded yourself. Okay, this would be, I wish this gentleman that called me and I should have told him to come to this. He wants to have a video played at the end of his service that's him saying thank you for coming. I don't know what else he wants to say. <laughs> he just said, can you record that for me? Yeah, I said, you sure could. I told him, you come on in, I'll do anything. But I can have him record it on his phone if I needed to do it for him. So the only good thing about this is we can also contribute to this as a funeral home so that we're able to assist you. I don't, I don't change anything. The only reason we're contributors, which is great, is we get to see your social security number at your time of death. We don't see it before then. Until we make it the time of death, as an acne, we don't see it before then. So that's a bonus. So you get to upload, you get to upload photos, they all go here. Maybe you, and to me, I down, I scan all my photos before when my kids were little because we had a family member lose their house in a fire. And she's like, I don't have any photos anymore of my kids. I don't have any more when my grandkids were born. She don't have any until now recent. She, she's, I didn't ever think, she never thought about that. You know, that wasn't something she put in the safe. Do we, any of us put it in the safe? I know my hard copies of my pictures are in a tote. But I also, in my safe now, have zip drives of all my little, little boys. Now the rest are on my phone. <laughs> They're in the cloud. But when they were little, I didn't. Have, we didn't have technology like that. I had five copies. You know, you always made duplicates and duplicates of photos. 
Here, the photos you want on your card, the photos you want for your video, can always keep adding. So if you have them, anybody can add. So as many editors or contributors that you add, they'll be able to add it to it. Can you be able to manipulate some data in the order that yep. the side has been stored? Yep, you can do that too. If you, like, so if you're doing it in order from, like, you want your pictures from, and you can know when you were, your baby picture is better than most of what age usually, scan them and name them number one, or baby with the year, three years with the year. Always name, I always suggest that too. Name your files in the chronological order the best you can. So that's an idea too. Next, personalize. Here's where you can personalize and start writing your obituary. It can be constantly changed through the years, as long as you want. You can add your photo. You want a certain one, you like, okay, I'm gonna tell my kids not to add that ugly photo of me because I really don't like that one of me. I love the one you love of yourself or you go and you take in a professional one. I get the glamour shots back in the day. Your high school one was really awesome. But do you look back and go, yeah, people know I look like that. Mm -hmm. I don't look the same. So get the one you want. Don't let them, oh, no, I'm just kidding. They can pick you. You don't let them contribute, help them help you pick. I just encourage you to do it now because I have people call and go, you think my kid's going to choose that purple dress? <laughs> I had a lady call me and it's probably last year and I said, what? I get random questions and I, I, I don't I don't question anyone with random questions that come to the funeral home anymore. And I said, well, and I said, is this for a service like right now? She says, no, 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 I'm just, she was starting to pre-plan. And I said, oh, well, oh, they might pick that purple dress. Is it a purdy dress? I didn't know what a purple dress looked like. And, and she said, well, no, I don't like the dress. And I said, then why do you have it first? <laughs> and, you know, if you're one of those that are like, ah, it might be, I'm going to wear that to so-and-so's wedding because she hates purple. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know. Or she loves purple and she thinks I look good in that dress, but I hate the dress. I always tell them. Can you go back with that yes. last one? I always tell them. Like I said. Put it in the back of your closet, what you want to wear. But here, you can go ahead and type what you want, or I'm going to tell them, yep, go pick a template. Select an option. This one will, they used to have more. Hmm. Okay, this is a basic one. But if you say there will be preferences in there, there's no, I'll get there to you. You start typing your stuff. Even write, type your notes in here. Type your notes. See, it's going to say, it's already put that she survived by me because I'm her daughter. Um, you can put who you're perceiving. This is kind of a generic what you get started with. I'm sure Rita went over it. It's the basics. I, I did, Jerrica, but it is gathering information that you programmed in early exactly it would yeah if you were to fill in all that information like if you're you die you know your city of birth you put it all in it's going to start a template for you and you can add more to it this is never final at all at all until you clicked add to obituary when you click add to obituary it's going to be there and it's going to let me know you've kind of like i've approved it I can unapprove it for you, don't worry. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, I locked that. Don't worry. Families call me all the time and go, I can't, I can't, I can't type no more in there. And I said, oh, let me go in there to your thing and I unlock it. Sometimes this has happened in families. You have somebody that is, you have said, you are in charge of the obituary, but I've made three people more contributors. Does the software has an option of editing the correction or modify it or not? Um, you can, yep, you can keep adding to it. If it is, I'm asking if, Jarek, Jarek, if the software mm -hmm. allow, like when I'm doing my editing. Yep. If I can see the options that 
I be able to do not allow nobody to modify. Yep. Yep. Just make sure it that does you have before you, I submit. Before you submit, yeah. make sure you're the only editor. Yeah, yep. If you don't want nobody to contribute to that, don't let them be a contributor. You just let them view it. <laughs> this is what mom wrote for herself. But if you want them to be able to help you with it and contribute, yeah. make a contributor. Um, so yeah, if we would have filled in all your information, it would have kind of gave you a basic, not really fluffing it up or anything, but you could add in there later. Or I even tell people, because I don't publish these without reading obituaries. You could type in there, please, please, please add more. Please add more. I need you to add more information. If you're just like, I'm confused. This is really, this is just too much. Type me a note, all capital letters. Funeral home, please add more information. We will. We'll ask your family more information. Rita will ask, you know, what was mom? I'm sorry, I get obituaries and it's like, mom was born, she married dad. I'm like, did your mom go to school? And she died. She had kids, she died. And it's like five, five sentences long and I go, how do you know you're, and then they expect, you know how this, so when I make the memorial cards and we make your memorial package and we want, where do I go? I go to that obituary. I want to know, did mom crochet? Did, did she even like her family? <laughs> did she play volleyball as a kid? Did she follow sports? Did she want flowers? I don't like flowers. So I don't want flowers on my car. So what else? Um, okay, there's a checklist. So the funeral home is going to send you, the, so at the time, this checklist is going to be helpful to your family. We will send you a checklist of things that you can do that we need from your family. The obituary, the, your clothes, we can add to it. So this is more of a funeral home checklist. And then our tasks are on here also. So it lets your family know that I submitted your, um, it'll let me know that I've submitted your vitals, that we're waiting on the doctor to sign for that death certificate. It gives them a status update. Um, yeah. Resources. Here are resources just to help you even. Grief and, um, grief and healing. Click on that one, Vicki. It's gonna give them little articles. You little articles. It's gonna help you walk through the meaningful. Keep scrolling down. <laughs> Your meaningful funeral. You know, explore options. This gives you top ten songs of funeral services. You know, this will let you do everything. It literally takes you to websites. No, oh, probably not a Jackson Brown. There's James oh, Taylor. <laughs> Not, not and then go back here to the planning center. Okay. Lots of stuff. Just, it's an, just this, I just love this planning center. Uh, it's this, an initiative of our funeral home to get it out there to people. We're trying to get my funeral directors read. Every time we get new technology at the funeral home, I'm redirecting them to add you to something new because technology changes. Your kids, your grandkids, they're not going to want me to hand them a piece of paper. I'm glad Rita did because I love that template. It asks your hobbies. It asks what you like to do. Maybe we don't know. And then gathering your service information. We would put everything on here. See, it's going to say that I, it was last edited. It's going to say, it's going to let you know that you haven't started your obituary. All this stuff. Everything. It's all here. So, you know, I, I go to my Walgreens app for my medication, and it lets you do a whole bunch more. I go to my medical portal. I can see all my last labs from the hospital. You know, they're always asking you, in that medical portal, every time you check in, do you want to opt in? I'm young, so I'm going to keep going with it. My mom's like, no. And I'm like, yeah, because I can check it for you, and I can be able to send those medical records. This. You can send your funeral records, your pre-need records. So this is what I would really, 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 really encourage you to do. Yes, ma'am. 
do you have any part of the day what at the moment of death what's supposed to be doing? Yep, it would come up at that time of death. It comes up on that checklist. Okay. Yep. That's also in the resources it's gonna let you know and on our website what to do at time of death. Yeah. Any questions? I'm almost out of time. They're telling me. I got So if I can share this with anybody, it is in a funeral home portal. Yep. That if I pass away, kid, somebody calls them, and then the funeral home would have. We do. Yep. So once that happens, so families, somebody passes away, you you know you've passed away, and your kids are like, ah, Mom said she had it all taken care of. I hear that all the time. Dad said she had it all taken care of. The first thing I do is I literally go to my side of the website, I type your name, and I see if it's there. That's going to let me know if you've pre-planned. It's going to let me know if you've even sent stuff to the planning center. I have another icon that lets me know, and I can go, yeah, and I'll open up that planning center or even the information on my end, and I'm like, wow, yeah, your mom has her pictures uploaded. She has... She has where she wants to be buried. And to hear that in a family's voice, like, oh, thank goodness. I don't even have to. You know, your child is in Florida, and they're like, it's going to take me a few days to get home to mom, unexpectedly. It's going to take me a little bit. Ah, I don't know where to start. And if I say, she's got all this. Oh, good. When I get to her house, I don't have to go looking through some of her paperwork. Eh, some moms aren't the most organized. My mom is not. When I walk in my mom's house, I be like, you are a hoarder like your mom. <laughs> She's pretty bad. My grandma collected material, my mom collects papers. So I would I am very thankful. Yes, sir. My mom was cremated and put in a little uh, one foot by one foot square yep. marble light box. And she wanted to be buried in the same cemetery as her dad and uh -huh. her her parents. Yep. But I also have friends who have their urns on a fireplace, like. Yep. Um, what are they gonna do with them after they're gone? I don't know. Uh, and I know others that have sprinkled over the ocean. Yep. Uh, yep. But what is cremation? In, in a nutshell, who uses cremation? Why would you want to do cremation? Why would Versus the bear. Good question. Um, I'm not a cremation person, so yes, you're right. I, I don't know. But, a pre, you know, we live in a community that they're not from here. A lot of people are cremated to go, go home a lot easier. So hopefully that person has a spot in their hometown where they wanted their cremated remains to be buried. Hopefully, which helps me introduce my next person. Oh, okay. Can I ask one more? One more question. Rita, Rita. You well, think that she never did. And I think Vicki mentioned that when you've got to go make funeral plans for somebody, somebody unexpected or if it's going to occur, how long do you think you spend at a funeral home with the funeral director yeah. pre planning a funeral? How long do you guys think your family's going to have to be in there? And they don't know. It ain't 10 minutes. Probably six to eight hours. Probably at least coming back and forth. It could be six to eight hours. Our general, when we set up arrangements, we tell families, please a lot for at least two hours to start. That's if you're to start. You might come back. You're going to come back to me with those photos. Or you're going to email. And it might not be just sitting at the funeral home with me. You might be on the phone with your director. You might be, you know, you, I'm going to send you up to the cemetery. you got to go pick your property. Oh, we didn't have property. You know, stuff like that. So, yeah, definitely, um, definitely, go ahead. How did you say we get an account on the portal? You give me your email and your name and first and last name, and that is it. And I'll walk you through it. I'd walk you through it if you called and said, you sent me that planning center. What do I need to do? Can I use my email for other people? Be like if I have to take care of my mother? You should. Sure. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can have more than one person 
under that email address. Could you please specify property? Property at the cemetery? Yes. We're the next person's going to do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have the cemetery guy here. And we have pie. And we have pie at the end. Okay. I'm Just one other question. This lady asked about, okay, where does that go into the funeral home's computer system for a pre-need? For a pre -need. I'm going to set, if you are living and you want me to send this, I'm not going to send you, I'm not going to set you up as you like, just die. No. It's going to be in the pre -need. Even Vicki, and all, if you met with Vicki after this, she's going to upload all your paperwork into that also, which is kind of nice. Oh, okay. Everything's well, there. Everything. So, more questions? Okay. So our next person is Darren Edmonds. He has been the sexton, which is now a superintendent. Just learned that today. I've always called him the sexton. He's a superintendent of the Campbell County Cemetery District. And he's been that since 2009. He oversees a staff of six full-time and 15 seasonal employees in the summer. If you have a young child that likes to mow, send in to them because I've seen they were hiring. <coughs> my kids get They loved it. One of my kids. The cemetery district operates and maintains nine cemeteries in Campbell County which of course include Mount Pisgah. The earliest record of burial at Mount Pisgah, does anybody know? Anybody been up there, know the history? It's 1891, which is making Mount Pisgah 133 years old. There is over 7,000 burial, 7, burials at Mount Pisgah, which include over 1,000 veterans graves. In 2016, Mount Pisgah built in two cremation gardens, the Unity Garden, which is the one um, down below, and then the Inspiration Gardens, which is on the top of the hill, if you haven't been, just go. Our cemetery is probably one of the prettiest ones, and I go to a lot of cemeteries. My husband's really tired of me working at the funeral home because I like going to cemeteries now. Um, <laughs> ours is pretty. Ours is just beautiful. It's nice. It's tranquil. Um, it increases, that increased all the offerings for the cremation related services, which is great. So if you even want a tour, Darren, I know we'll give you one. In the areas that literally like no other place in the country, it isn't. I, I can tell you it's not. And the cemetery has amazing technology, which you can also show you. They have it on their website. You can do a lot of stuff. Let me welcome Darren Edmonds. Thank you. Can you just hear me? Okay. Um, yeah, I, it's, it's my privilege to work at the cemetery. I, I tell people I have the, the greatest job. Um, my employees will tell you the same thing. We love coming to work and doing what we do um, for the people that we do it for. And that's the families of Campbell County who use our services or just come to visit. Um, so it, it's our honor to do that. And it takes special people to to work at the cemetery and I look for special people that can do the work that we do the way that we want to do it. So it's our privilege to serve you and your families and those over the last 133 years. So, oh, sorry. I know, I'm sorry. Um, real, real quick, um, I wanted to address this gentleman's question. Um, he said, why, why, why cremation versus burial? Um, and I can tell you from our perspective, um, we see a lot because it's changed a lot in the last 15 years that I've been at the cemetery. Um, and it, it's not my opinion, it's just, it's just what I see is cremation has allowed families a lot more flexibility um, with how they handle that, that end of life. Uh, for instance, me personally, my father was cremated. He is in three different places in the state of Wyoming. He's in two different cemeteries and a vegetable garden. Um, it allows you that flexibility. If, you know, uh, in Campbell County, it's not uncommon for, um, to go get scattered on the ranch or in the big horns or the favorite fishing hole. Um, I see a lot of, uh, families with lockets and jewelry, um, earrings, necklaces, um, and they end up everywhere. Um, it, it allows you to do that. Um, and that, that's a personal preference. Um, um, 
if that's meaningful to you, uh, but those opportunities allow you to do that. So um, anyway, um, if you're not familiar with the, the cemetery, um, you know, Jerrica and the funeral home, you know, they, they, they do a lot of pre-planning. You could do that at the cemetery as well. In fact, there, there's a story that I like to tell. Um, you know, but we know when people are pre-planning because we're we're one of the last stops in that process. They've been to the funeral home, they have their plan, they come up and and the husband and wife say, "Well, we're we're going to pick out." It, it really happens more often than not, and, and it makes me smile every time. So when we want to pick out our, our cemetery plots, we just left the funeral home and. You know, we, we've got all that taken care of. We just want everything taken care of when the time comes so our kids don't have to worry about it. And it's usually the wife that says, yeah, and and we, we want to do our monument, get our plots, we all take care of because they won't give us anything good if we leave it to them. <laughs> and we want to pick it, we want to pick it out. And it makes me chuckle every time because, um, I think they're, they're worried about that. You know, they'll, one one lady said to me, "Now, if there's anything left, like my son he'll, he'll buy a boat. We won't we won't get a monument. So we're going to get what we want. It's going to say what we want. And uh, so you 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 could. And my perspective as I deal with families is, and the funeral homes are no different. They're, you know, at the, the time of need." There's a percentage that comes in where it's all done and taken care of. There's a percentage that don't. They call that at need. You know, when the at need, it's very stressful, um, whether it's the spouse uh, or the children, um, if if the la if it's the last of the of the parents, and um, it's very stressful for for anybody when when they, when they come to us. You know, and, and you know, one of the things we do is when they pick that spot out, and we take them out, and we're standing there, and we say, "This, this is, this is the one that you want," or "This is where mom will be," or or whoever. It's a tough thing to do. Uh, it's very, it's the hardest thing I do with my job. Um, but when all of that is taken care of, sometimes it's just a phone call, and they get to skip that step, and it's it's just easy easier for everybody. Um, sometimes that's the reality. You know, sometimes mom and dad might have bought four spots. And we need to know which of the four we're going to use, but at least they don't have to pick it out. It's done for them to say that one. Um, it's just procedurally, it's, it can be very difficult and stressful. So to the extent that you can or that you choose to, the pre-planning, um, really makes things easier on you if you're the one that has to make those decisions or whoever's left behind so um and you know then you get what you want too so uh, is the space you want so darren how would i go about purchasing places in the rosette cemetery so yeah like so we have nine almost all the cemeteries inside of the border of campbell county are ours so uh, Rosette, uh, Savage to Bethlehem, ER down on the Ruby Ranch. We have a small cemetery right up on the Montana border. Um, in, in any of our spaces, whether it's in town or out of town, we will we, we can do it online in our office. We have uh, cemetery maps and technology that we can do it. We can show you the photo, a Google photo, or we'll meet you at the cemetery and. We, we can show you what's available and you know we we will go out and stand this is this is the spot we're talking about you know if, there, if you want to be by a tree or up on the hill at Mount Pisgah we'll go out and we'll find a tree spots available around the tree and we'll say you know here's here's a this is the tree or the shrub or the lilac bush we, we can do all of that so um, we routinely run down to ride out to Rosette down to Savageton to meet with families. Okay. That's the only office you have, is that? The Correct. Office? Yep, yep. Our, our only office is at Mount Pisgah. And so we do all of the district's business from there, but we're not shy about going out to any of those locations to meet with the family. Yeah. Yes, sir. Are any of them closed for burial, still open for cre cremation? 
Do you have that we we have lots of room at all of our cemeteries. So, like I say, Mount, Mount Pisk has been there for 133 years. We will still be burying people there 150 years from now. We might not be able to sell you property. We might not have any property left to sell 20 years from now. But people, cemetery properties are very generational. Families often buy more than they need. Um, in Campbell County, we have cemetery plots that families are still using today that are vacant from the beginning, <clears throat> from the homestead days. Um, some of the older, older families might still have 10 or 12 spots left that great great grandpa bought in 1914, about 30 of them, and some of those relatives. Are still using those spots. So if you buy a cemetery lot today, you might not use it for 40 years. So, um, but we will have another cemetery across town uh, by about 2040 where we'll have lots of spots to buy. So at some point, there will be two operating cemeteries in, in Gillette. So, any questions so far? Well, I had one the other day. Yeah. Why Mount Pisco? Where did it get its name? I know that's been in the news record years ago, but a lot of people go, what's that mean? Where is it? Yeah. That's How do you pronounce it? Mount Pisco. <laughs> um, in, in the Bible, in the book of Deuteronomy, when, when God took Moses and the, the Israelites out of Egypt, he took Moses, and so there's how you interpret the Hebrew words. Uh, in some versions it says, God took Moses to Mount Pisgah, and that's where Moses got to see the Promised Land. It wasn't in it, but from that, but Pisgah in Hebrew translates to the high place. So in some translations it says, God took Moses to the Pisgah, which was actually Mount Nebo in, in the Bible. So our other cemetery will be named Mount Nebo. So we're going to have both at some point. The name of that, it's an undeveloped property across town. and has been named Mount Nebo Cemetery since 2006. But that's where Mount Pisgah comes from, is from the Exodus story. Yes? I have a question. So if, let's say you decided you're, gonna, you're not going to need your, your cemetery lot, you prepaid for it, you're not going to need it? Right. Do you, would you buy it back? Yes, great question. So what she asked was, if you buy two plots, four plots, six plots, or even just one, and you decide you don't need it. We buy back cemetery plots at any time for any reason, no questions asked. So typically, if uh, say a husband and wife come in and they have adult children, they'll come in when they're doing their pre-planning, they'll, they'll buy the two they need, and nine times out of 10, they'll buy two more for the kids. Um, and the reality is that they probably have not asked the kids if they would like them, but they have them. They're there if they need them. Well, enjoy the transient community. So you might come in and buy one today, and you may relocate to another state, to Texas, next year, the year after that. Your plans change. Uh, you can come in at any time, and we'll buy them back from you or your heirs if, if you're deceased and there's extra ones uh, for the price that was paid for them. So if you, if you buy four and only end up needing two or one, or say, gosh, we decided to be cremated, we, we don't need these these burial plots anymore, we'll buy them all back. And if you make other choices, whether it's with us or you're gonna, you're gonna be scattered, you know, we'll, we'll buy it back. One more question. So if you're gonna be, if you're cremated, that you're gonna be buried, Yes. On your lot, is it the same? The opening and the closing is the price the same? So, in, in, in our cemetery, we have um, before 2016, you bought a, a piece of ground, grass, a casket sized spot, and you could do a casket or you could be cremated in that spot. You could still do that. Now we have our cremation gardens. And so, in our cremation gardens, it's a little different. There's We don't charge an open and close. That's an all-inclusive price. If you buy a regular plot in the cemetery, we have a fifty-dollar open and close charge for an urn, and for a casket, it's two hundred dollars to open and close. Yeah. That's, that's a 
cost of the plot? No, 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 that's the cost of to to do the placement. So if that's an urn or a casket, it's an urn, it's fifty dollars. If it's a casket, it's two hundred dollars. To, to dig the hole. Yes. To dig the hole. To dig the hole and then close it. And do the lots are they all the same or are they different prices depending on the, the our cemetery plots at Mount Pisgah are it's a tiered pricing. So they start at one hundred dollars and go up to eight hundred dollars. And they're based on the location. Um, it's sometimes it's think of it as real estate mm -hmm. and location, location, location. location. Um, we, we have found that over the history, if if everything was equal, people bought at the top of the hill first and right on the road second, and the middle's always filled in last. And as you go in our cemetery, as you go down the hill, so so it's priced, you know, up high where the views are better, those are more expensive. But I, but I tell people that if you've been to our cemetery, there's not a bad lot in, in the place. Um, the hundred dollar lots might be right next to a two hundred dollar lot, literally four feet away. There's nothing wrong with the, the hundred dollar lots aren't the ones that nobody wants. It's just the way that they've been priced. But if, if it's if it's budget sensitive, go get the hundred dollar lot and then save yourself seven hundred dollars because you get a hundred dollar lot next to a hundred year old tree, or you can get an eight hundred dollar lot next to a thirty year old tree. So, yes, ma'am. Um, I was interested in the veterans section. Yes, so we, we have a section at Mount Pisgah that is owned by the American Legion, and that's it's just referred to as the veteran section. So, if you served uh, in the military, you and your spouse. Um, you can't have spots for the children. It's just the, the veteran and their spouse, kind of like the National Cemetery, can be buried in that section. It's it's owned by the American Legion, so ultimately the permission and the the property stuff is is handled through them. We we, we handle the transaction, but we we notify them if somebody wants to use that section. So um, that that is an option. And in our cemetery, you know, we have. This morning, we have 1,045 veterans buried there. It's 17% of everybody that's buried in the cemetery since 1891, and so it's a lot. Um, where you see a white cross at in our cemetery, a veteran is buried there, and they're, they're everywhere. So, oh, so you don't have a section. We do. We have both. Oh. So if, um, if you have a family plot or, you know, you, you, if you want the kids or you want to be near the aunts and uncles, moms and dads, we, we we still mark and recognize the veterans wherever they're buried. So you don't have to just be in the veteran section to be recognized as a veteran. Um, if you were a veteran, um, the government will provide you with the military stone for your service at no charge. And so if, if you and your spouse are, are planning a wedding or a, a funeral, and a monument. Well, it is. We we actually we actually do a lot of weddings at the cemetery. Um, but the, you you can have your private family monument, and then you could order a footstone that would denote that that person's service, and it would it would sit at the foot of the grave, and there would be a white cross. So, uh, if you or spouse or family members who are a veteran, you know, when you're making your plans, the funeral home deals with that all the time, we can deal with it. The families could do it directly, um, but it's just another one of those things that you're doing and you can't pre, can't, with the VA, you can't do that part ahead of time. It, it's only done after the fact, but. For the, for the stone, not, not the funeral. But the, the, the headstone or footstone, the VA pays for 100%. And then when it comes to the cemetery, we set it on the grave. So there's no cost for a, a veterans monument at all to the family. Yes. So these um, cemeteries that are out in the country, are those 
most, are they just for people that live in that area or can anybody? Anybody can go there. Um, so if, um, if you wanted, if you just, um, we haven't said the ER cemetery is one mile inside the Montana border, sits right up on the ledge right above the Powder River. It's my favorite cemetery of all those that we own. Um, and I'm half tempted, you know, my wife and I, I don't know that she would go for it, but it's absolutely beautiful. So yes, you can go, you can be, they're all public cemeteries. So, but, but what, what you find is with these old cemeteries, when Campbell County was very young, Gillette was far away. Town was far away from the Ruby Ranch or from Wright or Savage, which is at the Pumpkin Buttes. Gillette was a long ways away. And there were very few automobiles. So these little rural cemeteries kind of clumped up for convenience. And then once they're there, they're there. And those communities, you know, still use them. So like at Bethlehem, it's not uncommon for the rancher families in that area, they, they already have property there or that's where their parents and grandparents are. But some of them will come to town and they, they want to be buried in Mount Pisgah. Um, but yeah, you can. So if you already have a plot, say, or a, one of those niches mm -hmm. of the, at the Mount Pisgah and you change your mind and decide you want to be buried on the hill over the river, you could do that. Yes. Could sell the, could sell the plot. Yes. Could stand by. Mm -hmm. Yes, you could. Yep. Um, the, the other thing that, that we're starting to see with, with cremation in particular, um, just because of the nature of it, is we're, we're seeing not necessarily um, as final of a resting place as, as what you get with the casket. So, you know, what we're starting to see is if somebody purchases a niche or even if they've buried an urn in, in the ground and the family relocates uh, for whatever reason uh, to Texas, you know, that they're going to relocate. It's much easier to take an urn somewhere else than it is a casket. Cheaper. And much, much cheaper. Yeah. Is Recluse, is that a public cemetery? Recluse is, there, there are two cemeteries in Campbell County that are ours. Recluse is not ours. And there's a the Pleasant View Cemetery on the Gray Road north of Rosette is not ours. So they kind of have their own little, so at Recluse you would deal with the Odecogan family up there. And I don't know who they let in and who they don't, but um, I know there's a decent number of services each year at both of those cemeteries. Yeah. I'm just curious, um, do you guys ever do like a couple's burial site where they are stacked? stacked? Yes. So, um, it, yeah, you can, it's, it's called a stacked burial. So if you have a single, a single spot, a single plot, which is four feet wide, 12 feet long, um, you can be stacked burials. You can have two burials, two caskets in the same grave. Um, our requirement, if, if you choose to do that, is the first one down is, is nine feet down and it has to be in a concrete vault. The second one does not have to have a concrete vault, only the first one. So people say, well, it's just cheaper to be side by side because then you don't have the cost of the vault. And fun fact about the cemeteries in Campbell County is we don't have a container requirement of any kind. So if you choose not to be buried even in a casket, we, we, we can accommodate that. And the funeral homes, the industry calls it a green burial. Um, we have buried several, in, several, we have buried several individuals in the last several years who are just simply wrapped in a blanket. Um, it's just as natural as you can get. And so with that burial, Burial. Mm -hmm. And what about can an urn burial go with the double decker thing there? Yeah, so in, in in our cemetery in a single adult burial space, our Mac our occupancy limit is three. So you can do two caskets and an urn, which would be that stacked, and an urn, you could do three urns or one casket, two urns. So that's 
kind of the common. So sometimes you have a spouse, you know, one of them wants to be buried and one of them wants to be cremated. Uh, what, what we see a lot is, okay, whether the first one is the urn or the casket, they get placed and when the time comes, we just simply place the other one. We, we keep very meticulous track of where everything is at and how deep it is. So does it have to be a concrete one then? No, no. If it's just a, a single casket, because the, the urns do not go underground as deep as the casket does. Caskets will go down six feet, and urns go down about two and a half to three feet. So if, if the urn is the second item to go into that grave, we're always, we, we're always above the casket. Does that make sense? Okay. We won't disturb any. green burial, though. It doesn't have a casket. Green burial would be. Would, Whichever you don't know which is going first. Right. right. But, the, but green, green or casket, we, we approach it the same. Whether there's a container or not, uh, it's it's going to be deep, then deeper than the earth. And if it's second, you know we we place a, a marker on the urn. So if we have to move the urn to do the burial second, but typically what we'll do if we know that's going to be the case is because the lots are 12 feet long, we will bury an urn in the as long as we have eight feet left over in the top three feet of the grave, and then we'll do the casket in the bottom nine foot of the grave. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. What yes. people do that? What do they do about headstones when there's several? So, so the, the reason that our magic number is three is because we, the, our policies allow each grave to have three markers. So you can have a marker at the head, a marker at the foot, and the third marker is a flat, we call it a flat grass marker in the middle of the grave that, that is literally flat with the grass, and that's so the mowers can go over. So you have three occupants, they can each have their own, own monuments. So, yeah. Did you say the cost was the same for or the same for what is the cost of the cremation garden? So there, there, there's in our cremation gardens, we have 31 different options you can choose from. Um, our, our lowest in, in our cemetery are. <laughs> it is. Um, yeah, yeah. So you know, we, we have the we have the wall stuff. We have lots of ground stuff. We have boulders. We have benches. You know, and some of those are small, medium, large, and so they're priced differently. They hold different numbers of urns, so um, families can still be together. Um, so, that, like our benches and our boulders will hold four to eight urns. Some of our walls will hold nine or more urns. Um, and so, yeah, but then it's our, our cheapest cremation product is $25. And it's a small spot out um, across from our front office. They're two foot by two foot grass graves in the ground, um, kind of designed for one, but you could do two. You just you're you're limited in the monument. Um, there, there are no uprights. They're all flat grass markers. Um, our our large estate boulders that'll accommodate four to eight urns are seven thousand dollars. And includes engraving. Includes, yeah. So right. So, and, and, I, and I brought some, and these are free for you to take. These, these are um, pamphlets that we have for our cremation gardens, inspiration and unity. And it, it'll show you the different things in there. There's rate sheets in there. What, what we found since we built the gardens is that when you choose something in the gardens, it's, it's all inclusive. You, whatever the price is that you pay, it includes your monument, it includes your engraving, um, in every case except the boulders and the benches are, are custom engraved. Uh, the rest of them are, are templated, they're all going to have the same font, the names are all the same size, but the boulders and the benches, we can do custom whatever you want engraving. So we charge a little extra for the boulders and the benches, but if you buy an inch wall door, uh, the smallest niche will accommodate two urns. 
you can engrave two names and dates and special lines of memorial text. And so whatever that, and those are priced by rows. So the bottom row is the cheapest, the top, top row is the most expensive. But whatever that price says, that's all you'll ever pay. We don't charge you to open the door and put the second urn in. We don't charge you to do the final dates when that comes. So if, if, if it's mom and dad and all we're placing is dad, we'll engrave his name and dates. We will place him. If it's six years from now and it's time for mom, we will do mom's engraving at that time for no charge and the placement for no charge. So it's just simpler to keep track of stuff for us and that's why we do it that way so that we don't have to figure out if you paid for your final date 10 years ago. Um, so it's whatever. So if it's the kids that come to us and say, we need to place mom and, and put her engraving on that door, we don't know anything about it. It's just, we just take care of it. So, um, Can we, you give tours? we love to give tours. Uh, myself and Jerry Lynn are the only two that you'll encounter in the office. Um, and th this time of year, um, it's, it's why I was a little bit late as I was, I was giving a garden tour, um, this afternoon over the lunch hour. Um, if you've never been to the, to Mount Pisgah or if you've never been to the gardens, come and see them. I mean, um, I said earlier, we, we have a wedding there on Saturday, um, and we do quite a few weddings there throughout the summer. Um, and we, we do as many funerals, but we have the two largest moving artificial water features in Campbell County. So what people love about the gardens is they can come and sit and listen to the water. Um, yeah. In the garden, is it just for weddings? We do funerals yep. up there. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so you know, we um, we we built these this the big garden in particular to do a number of things to to do uh, celebrations of life that that people find meaningful throughout their lives, not just for the sadness and grief at the time of loss. So. My directors will tell you a wedding looks a lot like a celebration of life. And part of the reason we do as many weddings up here as we do is very often the bride or the groom has somebody in the cemetery. It's mom, it's dad, it's grandma, it's grandpa. The wedding we're doing this weekend, um, the groom's parents and grandparents are buried probably 30 feet behind that building. And it's a meaningful way for them to have the family that's not here with them on their special day. So they, they, they rent the facilities for the weddings and the family reunions um, because there's a meaningful tie to the cemetery. Um, if you've ever, on Tuesday nights in the summer, uh, if you're not aware, we have, we have concerts in that area right there. Um, it's not loud rock and roll music, it's usually a guy or a girl with a guitar for three hours. Um, but a lot of the people that choose to come to those uh, Tuesday night concerts um, have somebody in the cemetery and they come. My mom is a widow. She comes and spends the evening with my dad. And so does her other widow friends. So um, you're not, not your, your typical cemetery usage or presentation. And when Jerry introduced it, there's literally nothing else like this in country um, where you have the sacredness of what a cemetery is and to be able to blend other uses with it without violating that sanctity. Um, we, have, we have cemeteries come every summer to see how we did this here um, to protect that balance and I mean, every summer and we, we built them eight years ago and they still come to see how did you how, how does this work? How do you do this? How did you do it? So, yeah. So the, the original question was about the garden tours. We love to do them. We have a little golf cart we bought just to take people out so we can, you know, if it's just easier to get in and out, we wheel in and out of the gardens and the golf cart. So if, you want to, if you've never seen them, come up on a, on a decent day and we'll, we'll take you out in the golf cart. 
Yes. Is it every summer that you guys do the, the tour with uh, a guy that explains all of the uh, monuments or well, the, the sculptures. The sculptures, yeah. So, yes. So uh, each summer uh, for the last since 2018, uh, we began adding sculptures throughout the cemetery, and a lot of them are in the gardens. And in July, usually, you know, the artists that had sent in new pieces, we have an artist reception. We have a hay wagon. We have you know free ice cream. You can come up, take the ride, go meet the artists, and. Local artist Tom Ford is usually the guy on the wagon that explains the whole every every piece as you come to it, and, uh, and it's really it's really a neat it's really been a neat program. So that was to beautify the cemetery and the gardens, but it's just another one of those celebration of life kind of events for us. So. Yeah. I was wondering, um, I I used to go every summer to walk up there when my mom was over at the legacy mm -hmm. and did you, have you ever put any benches around to sit on because you know, i've been walking i think man i wish i could sit down but i don't want to sit on somebody's bench that's part of their monument because i don't mm -hmm. feel that's right but you know i and i talked to tommy butler about this you know before he passed away and um he said that y'all were working on it yes so, yeah we had a great idea that's a great yeah, um, we have areas of the cemetery reserved for that specific purpose. We've had some family in our gardens. There are benches and places to sit. Um, we've had, like right in the middle of the cemetery, by one of the sculptures, the family placed a memorial bench, which is available to the public. They donated it to the public. Um, so yeah, we're we're looking for places where we can add those uh, throughout the cemetery. Uh, because our cemetery is used by people walking more than a lot of the city parks are. Um, yeah, I mean, it's we, we've counted two to three hundred people on a nice day that just come to walk, you know, which is extraordinary. Um, sometimes we, we have trouble driving around the roads while we're there working on a nice spring day because there's just lots of people. And that's great. We love it. But yeah, benches and sit seating for the public when they use it for whatever they use it for is something we're focusing on. I got a question. There is an ossuary, and would you explain what that is and where it is located? So, in, in, in our big garden, uh, if you don't know what an ossuary is, is, is a place where uh, communal ashes will be placed together without a container. So. We don't allow you to come into our gardens and scatter the ashes above ground. It's basically a scattering garden that's underground in a, in a concrete vault. So that's what an ossuary is, just a communal um, vessel for multiple sets of remains. And then you have individual markers if you so choose um, outside of that. So um, we've actually never had anybody opt for that option. It's the only, it's, it's $50, it's, it's one of our cheapest options, but we just haven't, just hasn't caught on. Okay. Well, I, I don't think a lot of people know about it, but it is locked. I can't yeah, just come it's out sealed. some night and, and put no, it no, in. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, so, here's the other thing about cremation. Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? You know, we've had people come up to the office and say, hey, I'm here to visit. Uh, I, I need to find this grave. I think they'll, they'll give us a name. We'll look in our records and say, well, we don't have it. I said, well, you do because I was here. I helped put it in the ground. <laughs> and we shudder. We cringe. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're supposed to do that. And it's, it's important for us to know who's here and, and when they got here because, um, you know, because uh, they just came up on a Saturday. Everybody knew where what the wishes were, and it had been some years after they had passed. And it was a, it's a very well known Campbell County family. It's like, well, yeah, we just came up and you know we just shoveled it, we put them in, and, and uh, that's not the way it works. Um, you know, if you're, if you're just trying to save the fifty dollars, we we could work something out, but um, you know, so yeah. <laughs> You mentioned with the ossuary, you can 
Can you put a name plate somewhere? Yeah, so you know, in our garden, one of those thirty-one options is, you know, any of the any of the monuments that you see there don't have to contain an urn. They can just be, you know, what we call monument only. So if you wanted a seven thousand vote dollar boulder and you just wanted the names and dates on it, but you decided to make the placement in the ossuary for fifty dollars, you could do that. We have um, along our pathways. We have like just pavers, granite pavers that accommodate one name and one date. So you oh, can just do no burials and then there right, that. right. Okay. So you can just get you know just it's just a name. So if, you know in that way, if somebody does come to visit, we will point them to the paver that has the actual engraved name or whatever it is. But the boulders allow a certain amount. Of Yes, but we have both our both a lot of our stuff will do both. Like our boulders along the streams, some have pre-installed urn chambers and some do not. So if you want a boulder but but the urn has gone to the ranch or the bighorns and you just need a place to go and it's just names and dates, we have boulders for that specifically. Yes. Darren, can you address um, how to balance the cemetery versus you know what our reverence is and having events there talk a little bit about the history of how cemeteries came to be yeah so when we decided to do this you know where we have concerts and weddings and how the public uses our cemetery uh, in the early 20th century and certainly the 19th century cemeteries were the only places uh, historically where there was green space there were no public park systems other than say central park in new york at that time where people could go where there where it was green and there was trees like you know now there's parks everywhere it wasn't the case cemeteries were the only places where that existed so people would go there on saturdays and have lunch and play badminton and you know pull out a guitar or a fiddle and spend all day and you know the kids would play and and then as the park system became popular throughout the country and cities People moved out of cemeteries and kind of only used them at the time of funerals. You came and you did your funeral and you came and you visited. And so that, that kind of went away. And there's been kind of a resurgence to bring people back in for the, like my, my directors will tell you, they think you should celebrate everybody's life from beginning to end. And then, you know, obviously, you know the remembrance after somebody's departed so that's kind of our was our approach when we built these gardens is we wanted them to be used throughout life and certainly do the job they needed to do after life does that does that make sense and it's some people can't get their heads around it uh they don't understand it but you know gen, there's been three or four generations where that that's just what cemeteries were. Um, but you know, while wedding in a cemetery, you know, until you explain to them, well, it's meaningful to them because it's how their mother or their brother or their child can be a part of that event in their life. And you can combine them in, at the same place. So have you ever considered <coughs> Cemetery. Okay. So our, our next cemetery will have, when we develop the Mount Nebo property, it will have a dedicated uh, pet cemetery. Um, I can tell you from experience, there are lots and lots of pets at Mount Pisgah, uh, especially with cremation. Um, well, exclusively with cremation. Um, we have somebody who bought a, one of our large niche doors, it'll, it'll hold nine human urns but it was just for him and his wife and the dogs and i said well we won't memorialize the dogs but with with their names or their dates but what they did is they, they just added whatever number of little paw paint graphics one for each dog so there's two urns well there will be two human urns and i think there's already three three pet urns in there but it's not uncommon even when we do casket burials it's not uncommon for you know, uh, and sometimes it's done at the funeral home before they get there, 
or sometimes it's, if it's a graveside service, they'll add the cat or the dog or dogs, you know, that they cremated. Yeah, they're cremated, yes, Exclu exclusively <laughs> cremated. So we have lots and lots of pets at the cemetery, but not an official pet cemetery only section. But our next cemetery will. Um, so Gabe put in, I had in my one of my dogs cremated into my truck yard. Yeah. And my head of man put in a tube at, the, at, at your house. Yeah, he's yeah. Back in the back here in the front of my house. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Yeah. That's a black. I do. Yeah. For us, it's flowers. Nice. Okay, that's legal. It do. Yeah. If you do it. Yeah. 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 Um, one of the other uh, things that you know that I wanted to just touch on um, while we have some time is on our website. Um, we we've, we've invested a lot in technology. Um, yeah, go ahead and click there. Yeah. So on our, on our website, if if you are buried in one of our cemeteries, it creates a burial record, and so any anybody that's that's interred there. One of the things that, that we do, first of all, is we have our own we have our own app, and on every page of our of, of the whole entire site, you can download this to your mobile device. It'll do it'll it'll behave very similarly on here, a little bit different, but every grave in Campbell County that's ours is GPS located. So if you look up a name, um, you just type in Edmonds. We're going to use my my father as the example, um, and then just click search. So, so then this is my dad, and over here on the right, you'll see Google has put a pin where his grave is physically located. So, um, if you click on his name, so it's going to give you. And it's going to show you all, all these other areas, arrows that are buried next to him and near him. But my dad's still at the top. And you'll see it, it says view and submit memories, get directions, or 360 degree ground view. So everyone that's buried, you have this option to add photos, videos, the story of their life. Um, and anybody can do it. So if your family is scattered all across the country, a cousin or a second cousin or an old Air Force buddy who lives in Florida can go and click on that memories and can share a memory and they can add in whatever they want and say, uh, Jack was Jack and I were in the Air Force in 1961 in Florida. Here's a picture. Um, so you can add YouTube videos. You can, as much or as little as you'd like, a family can populate this however they choose, uh, from wherever they choose. You can do it from your phone. So, so are we supposed to be submitting obituaries to you, or how did you get your dad's up there? Well, I just copied and pasted his obituary and kind of customized it. So it didn't have to be the obituary. You can just say, this is my dad. And, and start writing, it's whatever the family or the contributors want it to be. Okay, kind of, now, they, when they come up to purchase property, how do they get connected to this? I must have missed that. You... So when, when you've had a service, we, we send within a day of that service, we send a sympathy card, and in that card to the family, it, it will mention this, it will mention this feature, and it, you know, um, but I think it's probably been a little slow to adopt is, you know, maybe we're sending that at a bad time. And with everything else that's going on. It's never a good time. Yeah. But here, so the past burials, do you have that option available for almost anybody? Any, any, any burial record that, that, that we have at any of our cemeteries, when you click on that person's burial, you can click add a memory. Now, what it will do is 
every every one of those will come to the office for approval before it goes live to to screen out bad actors or you know what we've noticed sometimes dysfunctional families um, so we we screen them for profanity inappropriate images and just stuff that might look like it's being me um, and we can reject it so the whole world won't see that unless we let it through when you click on there in that location, does it give you the the exact location to get to that? So yeah, if you click the um, yeah, click get directions, and this is really handy from your app. <laughs> yeah, Google Google will drive you to any grave that that we control. I mean, it it will drive you if you're in Louisiana and you look this up and and click on it. it drive you from Louisiana to that grave. Yeah. This is really cool. Um, is it is it a thing across the country that, that cemeteries are starting to do? Uh, it's, it's becoming more and more common. Um, you know, there, there's a cost associated with it, an annual cost, you know, um, and stuff. So a lot of cemeteries, you know, just won't because of the cost. Uh, we are we are fortunate that you know we are able to provide this. Um, where I found it particularly useful is when the flower shops come to the cemetery. And we say we tell them you go use the app because they'll come in. It's a 60, 60 acre cemetery with eighty eight blocks and sixteen thousand lots, and they're looking for one. They don't know where block six is or twenty three or double A. So we said, well, use the app. Google will just drive you right to it. And they can drop their flowers off. But, but a lot of times, we, we, we did this feature because a lot of people, especially in the summer, kind of visit on weekends when we're not there. So how do people find a grave in a cemetery that big if they've never been there? And sometimes the locals have been there, but it's it's big. It's intimidating. Um, it takes, you know, Unless you come every day, it can be hard to find something. But you can just go on this app on your, yep. on your phone and bring up directions to. Yeah, so you go to our website, and on our website, um, on the, at the top of every page, it will say download our app. So if you're going to use your smartphone or iPad, yeah, it'll, and it's on every, wherever you're on our website, that's at the top of the page. So you could download that and then. It, you can search Rosette if you want to look just at Rosette. Um, but if you just search all of them for Smith, you'll see everybody named Smith at every cemetery. So if you don't know the first name of the spelling and you search for Smith and there's 32 of them, you'll have to look down and say, that's the one I need. And then get directions and it'll drive you to that grade. So that's, um, if you go back, I'll show you the other really cool thing. Um, go back to this, uh, remember a loved one? Or yeah, go, go to Dad's page there. Yeah. And then yeah, I hit the back button one more time. So in the meantime, if I don't download the app, but I want to know where somebody's buried, you have a different location, right? Yeah, or you can go to the website. Okay. Yeah, and you can come into the office. We actually have a paper, a paper book that will tell you the lot and block and location of everybody. Um, You've got to know what lot and block the last. Yeah, you can just do it your search and yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, just click on the name. So the other the other thing is is uh, some years ago the cemetery had the Google Street View go through the cemetery. So here we we're looking at my dad's record again. I showed you the, the memory thing, the get directions, but if you click 360 ground view. And then, Jerk, if you just grab the mouse and go this way, up the other way, 
So right, right there is my dad's grave. Yeah. So every road in the cemetery. So now if you were to go click on these arrows, you could literally walk yourself virtually through the cemetery. So yeah, if you just click, it'll turn red. Yeah, if you click that, it'll start to take you down the road. As you spin, you'll be able to see the road. You can look up, look down. So our, the entire cemetery, our Rosette Cemetery, Bethlehem, Wright, uh, all can do this. And so if you search a grave and want to see what it looks like, or you know what it looks like, but you're in Syracuse, New York, and it's dad's birthday, you can click on 360 view and not looking at it today, but you can look at it. Yeah, you can, yeah, you and to a degree. Yeah. So if you roll your mouse, you can get closer. And yeah, sometimes, you know, when the vehicle did it, it was on the road. So, you know, the further you are, we're away from the vehicle. It can be found uh, statewide, right? Anywhere in the United States. Our, our website so, so, can. Yeah, from anywhere. I have relatives in Arkansas. Yeah. And I can see the grave from yep. the phone. So if you if they go to our website. Yep, yeah, just send them the website and yeah. And if you know out on the main page, if you want to start at the front gate of the cemetery, you can you can just start at the front gate and drive yourself through the cemetery and just have a look see. We we have people do that with our gardens, they'll look at them see what's there and they'll walk navigate down the paths or by the walls and, and they'll call and say i want i want to spot the wall with the red doors um, or the black doors and they'll call us and get more information that way do we do we're probably one of the only cemeteries that do that um it's there's what was the question do we clean monuments um, um, and how do we get that done? We, so by request, we will do it uh, immediately uh, as, as practical. So if you call today and said, I'd like to get my husband's headstone cleaned, we'll probably have it done no later than tomorrow. So by request, we always do them. We, tr we try in the summer, the kids, when they're, but if, if they get caught up on the mowing, their task is to then start cleaning monuments. But we have our own well supply, which is why our stones get the iron and the hard water on them. So we might clean it today. It might not look like we cleaned it at all a month from now. But if a family comes in and says, you know, it's so-and-so's birthday on Saturday, people are coming up, would you clean that monument? We will, we will do it. Is No, there's no charge. You guys get the rest. Yes. Yep. And... You know, sometimes families will, they'll bring their own, they'll bring a bucket of vinegar up. It takes forever. Vinegar, we're happy to do it because we, we have, we spent years finding just the perfect product that can do it. We can clean a headstone in less than three minutes with what we use. Um, I mean, we're just set up to do it, you know, and, and people will go out there and scrub for hours with vinegar. Um, yeah, toothbrushes and vinegar. Um, so what is the product? Just it's actually it's actually a commercial toilet bowl cleaner, uh, but you can't the public can't just go get it off the shelf. The closest thing, the closest thing in a store, if you were to buy it, is CLR. You know, you can buy that anywhere at the grocery store. That's the closest, and we've tried that. Um, it takes it, a while. It gets. It takes. It, it does. It does. It, it's it's the closest thing we found that's available retail. It just it still would take you a lot longer than than what we use. So um, actually, this summer when that campery is here, they're um, they're going to clean in in the period of four days, uh, which would take us years to do. They're going to clean every headstone, every cross, every block marker in the cemetery in four half days. So total work time will be 11 hours, and they're going to clean 7,400 monuments, 1,050 crosses, 88 block markers, and 
whatever else we can get them to do. Yeah, that, yes, yes, we are, we are we are stockpiling hoses and <laughs> cleaning solution and buckets and nozzles and um, because it's a, it's an opportunity for us to do it all at once. Uh, it's, we've never been able to do it. We can do parts every summer, but never never the whole thing. So we're really excited about that. So that solution is not harmful to the trees or plants, right? Well, it's, I mean, it's its a commercial cleaner, so, but we keep it mostly compartmentalized in a bucket, apply it with a brush. You know, we're not just dumping it out on the ground. Like copious amounts, no, no. Okay, so we are over. Is there anything? Yeah, sorry. Do you have anything like left that you really wanted to cover? No, I, is there anything you needed me to cover that we haven't? But if, if there are any questions ever, um, it's that we, we love, we're proud of our cemetery. We love to show it off. We love to do garden tours. Um, you know, and, it, and it, it, when that's part of your planning process, whatever that is, we are so happy to help. And, and, I mean, that's what we do. That's what we're there for. Um, we literally don't have anything else to do. Um, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. So we're gonna get finished up. We do have Kai cookies in the back, but the one thing I want to—if uh, it's not obvious—people who work in our industry and work at the funeral homes or um, the cemetery, I'm not sure that it's an interview question, but it should be if it isn't. Do you love people? And do you love your community? Because I will tell you, that everyone I work with at the cemetery, at the funeral home, we all love our community. We love people. And with that said, next week, same time, same place, different pie and different speaker. Uh, will be Ricker will be here to talk about uh, getting everything kind of lined out for uh, your end of life legal documents. It'll be a QA and a time as well. And then on the 6th of April in the same room, we're going to have an end of life symposium. And please bring family, friends. Uh, it will be similar information to what you've been uh, learning about last Thursday, this Thursday, next Thursday. But we're going to have guest speakers, keynote speaker. We're going to have lunch, uh, light lunch. And um, so it will be here in this room. We really, really appreciate you guys coming. Please go spread the word about your local funeral homes, whether you're watching on Facebook um, or not. Your local funeral homes, your local cemetery, and how many resources there is there for you as a community. All right. Enjoy the pie. Enjoy the cookies. Thank you very much. What's our favorite? And thank you, library. Yep. Thank you. Katie, is that for?